Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. Today is Wednesday, May 17th, and it is National Cherry Cobbler Day. So, anyone out there in the listening to this, let me know if you're making some cherry cobbler. That sounds pretty darn good. <laughs> Today, our scripture reading is going to be—it's going to be a long scripture reading. It's taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, and it's going to be verses thirty-one through forty-six. And today and tomorrow's episode is going to going to be a mini series, if you will, because today we're going to look at a picture of the end times, what's going to happen, and then tomorrow we're going to take a look and discuss the topic of making sure that we're on the right path, making sure we're on the right path, because we're going to take a look at somebody who probably thought he was on the right path, but actually wasn't. And it's important to know that you're on the right path because of what we're going to look at today. And so they're going to work hand in hand. So make sure you don't miss tomorrow's episode. But anyway, for today, Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse number 31. Scripture says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and these are all the words of Jesus. Before I get into this, these are all the words of Jesus here. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set, them, set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered? and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink. And when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them that, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous into life eternal. Friends, if there was ever a a time, if there was ever a day that you wanted to make sure that you were on the right path, this is it. Because we got a glimpse here uh, in Jesus telling his disciples about the end times and about the judgment. And this is after the tribulation. This is after the thousand-year reign of Christ. This is after the devil is re-released out to do some more damage. And this is just prior to the new heaven and the new earth coming, or the new heaven coming down on the earth, the new Jerusalem coming down on the earth. That's what I'm trying to get out. And this is the judgment seat. This is where all of us, everybody, will be gathered before the throne of God. And scripture tells us that we're going to be separated, the sheep on one side, the goats on the other side. And 
the king is going to say to them in verse 34, on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is when those who have given their life to Christ, those who have lived for him, those who have done his will, this is when they they go into their eternal reward. This is where they they get their eternal reward here. And then Jesus says why they are they are there. In verse thirty five, for I was a hungered and he gave me meat. I was thirsty and he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in, naked and he clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison and he came unto me. These are the works that we as Christians should be doing for our world. Not necessarily just for those in church, but for those that are outside the church. I go by two churches, or a lot more than two churches, but I go by two specific churches on my way to work. And both of them uh, has a food pantry ministry. One of them does it Monday nights at 6 o'clock. The other does it Tuesday afternoons. And I know it's Tuesday afternoons because I pass by the church on my way to work. And there's always a line of people there with bags or with um, laundry baskets waiting to get their, their supplements, waiting to get their foods. So you see, the church needs to go out and help those that are in need. If you look in the Gospels and you spend any time studying the Gospels, what did Jesus do? Jesus ministered to the needs of the people. And that's what we need to do as well. We need to minister to the needs of the people. I've shared this illustration once or twice. Um, I don't really share it that often, but I think I'm going to share it here right now. Uh, many, many, many years ago, I was probably I'm talking probably 30 years ago, um, me and a friend was out running around town one night and he was a preacher's kid and and um we had decided before we we headed home this is a saturday night i remember that clearly and we had decided before we went home we was going to swing by mcdonald's and get something to eat uh, before we headed home and as we were going into the restaurant this man who was who was evidently homeless i mean he looked homeless was sitting there and he had made a comment to us about giving him money to get something to eat. And, you know, I'm not one that would necessarily just walk up and hand somebody money. If if somebody had a need, they needed food, they needed water, they needed help paying a bill, whatever, and I could help meet that need, I'm, I'll do that. But just giving money out of the blue, I generally don't. But me and my buddy, we said to this guy, yeah, well, we'll get you something to eat. Come on in with us. And and we walked up to the counter, and we had him order first. And we, we said to him when he got his food, you know, go ahead and sit down, and we'll be over to join you here in a minute. And we got our food, and we started heading over, and we looked all through the dining room at McDonald's and couldn't find him anywhere. And... You know, we kind of glanced outside, and I mean, we didn't run around trying to find this man, but we, we looked around and, and didn't see him anywhere. And I've always thought that possibly we we entertained an angel that day. Paul writes about that else in, in his letters. But I'm sure many of us that's listening to this has stories similar to that where we, we helped somebody and probably entertained an angel. But the point that I want to make is we could claim all we want until we're blue in the face that we're a Christian and born again and right with God. But the fact remains that's going to be proven by our actions. Here in this, this glimpse that we get at the judgment, at the end of time, we get a glimpse here into that to see what happened. And I bet that there's going to be millions and millions of people that is on the left side that is with the goats in this illustration or in this story who thought that they were saved, who went to church every Sunday, who tithed their money. But Jesus is going to say, depart from me. 
because you didn't you didn't meet the needs of people. I didn't know you. If we really are truly followers of Jesus, we're going to do the things he did. As we get the opportunities. So Jesus says here to him in verse 40, he said, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it to me. And then he looks at those that are on his left-hand side in verse 41 and says, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That's a clue right there. That's a key right there. None of us, we as humans, the creation of God, was never meant to go to that everlasting fire, to go to hell. That was created, that was prepared for the devil and his angels. But all those who didn't truly give their life to Christ is going to find themselves there. There was a meme on Facebook, and I talked about it the other day, and I'll mention it briefly here. It said, hell is not going to be full of people that God rejected. Hell is going to be full of people that rejected God. And friends, we may think that we're doing the right thing, but you got to make sure. you got to make sure if you feel God calling you to do something else, then maybe you're not on the right path. We got to be sure. And Jesus gives them the same, same list here. For I was hungered and he didn't give me any meat. I was thirsty and he gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you ignored me. Naked and you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison and you didn't come and visit me. And verse 44 says these people are going to say, Lord, when did we see you that way? And Jesus says, you didn't do it to anybody. So that's like not doing it to me. Friends, I don't know where you are in your walk today. I don't know where you are in your in your Christian walk. But I beg you and I urge you to make sure you are where you are supposed to be. Because like I said before, there's going to be a lot of people it's going to be heading to the lake of fire. It's going to be heading to that place called hell. Who thought that they were on the right track. Tomorrow we're going to look at somebody that thought he was doing the will of God. But found out he wasn't. So you don't want to miss that. But for right now, take time today. Pray, seek God, and make sure you are where you need to be doing the things that he's called you to do. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you and then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. And I'll have three glazed donuts, two chocolate-covered donuts, two maple bars, and a cinnamon roll. I got it. Sam, long time no see. How you doing? Hey, Bill, doing okay. Hang on a second, will you? Excuse me, uh, can you put extra frosting on that cinnamon roll? No problem. Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, so how's the diet coming along? Really good. The doctor's been really strict, but I eat everything he tells me to eat. Hey, you want a donut? No, thanks. The doctor tells you to eat donuts? Oh, no, no, no. That's something I allow myself to do. You can't be 100% faithful with everything. Even a diet? Especially a diet. Really? So have you lost any weight? You know, come to think of it, I think I've gained a couple of pounds. Man, this diet is worthless. I just knew that doctor didn't know what he was talking about. If you allow sin to have a little space, it will grow. If you truly want to grow in Christ, be obedient to God in all areas of your life. Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. 